open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. This is Steiny. Holy fucking shit. Is this a doozy of a story? Road rage, it happens to people. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some people that just habitually drive too aggressive and they're assholes and they're always flipping people to bird and being smart mouths. Yes, absolutely. So I'm driving home from work and there's a car behind me. There's cars in front of me. It's traffic. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving down 109th in Champlin towards the high school. You know the area. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. Well, the car behind me, I like lean over to grab a napkin to wipe my nose. Right? He honks. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, am I, I'm going 38. Okay, I'll go like 42. Because I think it's 40 here, but I wasn't sure. Okay. First chance this motherfucker gets, he goes around me. And he honks, flips me the bird. Learn how to drive, asshole. Oh. And I look at him like, this guy's got a Domino's pizza thing on top of his fucking car. Is he that stupid? He's a delivery driver. He's got the corporate fucking logo on top of the goddamn car. Nice. Gray Mazda, by the way. I'm not going to give his plates. I'm not going to dox him. Gray Mazda. White guy and uh, balding. Looked like a schmuck. So we get to the next stoplight and he turns one direction. It's also the direction I had to go. My, hmm, enter it. Wait a minute. He's going back to the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So at the light, I just kind of beep, beep, beep. I'm like, hey, you going back to the restaurant? Because I'd love to have a word with your manager. And he says, go ahead, faggot. Oh. And I'm like, the fuck did you just say? Now, without thinking, and this was stupid of me, I carry an expandable police baton in my car. I've had it for years. Sure. I pull it out. I whip it out the window to extend it. I point it at him. And he goes... You gonna hit me with your stick? And I said, No, I want you to shove it up my ass for pleasure, you stupid cunt. Oh, well. I don't know if he heard that part, but he chuckled when he's like, You gonna hit me with your stick? <laughs> right? At no point did he seem at all threatened. We keep going. We get to the restaurant. Now, I can't park. There's not enough spaces. Oh, boy. That, yeah. that strip mall was very busy. So did you double park? No. I waited for a spot, which was like two minutes. He got a spot right away, backed into it, because obviously he's got to put pizza in the back of his car to leave. So when I finally get in there, now there's this little white girl who weighs about 90 fucking pounds, and her hair is half blonde and half green. Some other guy's walking in after handing a pizza to somebody, you know, curbside. She's like, hey, come on, come on in here, just get in here, get in here. I go inside, and somebody says, I believe it was her, you need to get out of here. I'm like, why? I haven't done anything. I'd like to talk to a manager. No, you should just go. I'm going to talk to a manager about that driver right there and a big problem I have with him and his behavior. So then I'm like, so is there a manager? And somebody's like, I'm a manager. And I look and it's this doofy looking fucking kid who's probably in his mid twenties at best. Of course. Puffy red fro like Kyle from South Park underneath the hat and a scruffy red beard. I start telling the story, right? And there is... Like six or seven people behind the counter all bunched together like a cluster of fucking grapes. Oh boy. Yeah. Nobody's got their phone out or anything. We haven't achieved that level of infamy. That's surprising in this day and age. Well, maybe they got some corporate policy that they get in trouble. I didn't notice anybody doing it. Well, maybe they figure it's being recorded anyway. So I tell the story up to the point of him calling me a faggot. And the manager's like, okay. I'm like, I mean, okay. Right. Like, you just, you condone that behavior? Right. Like, well, no, I don't condone it. I'm like, well, Jesus Christ, somebody's got to care. Maybe I should call the cops. And someone's like, we already did. Yeah, I'm right. Like, oh, fuck off. Right. And not. then the manager goes, well, what did you do? Gesture and call him a cunt? Why? Nothing else? And the girl goes, so you pulled a gun on him? What the fuck? And I just kind of went, <laughs> wow. and shook my head and smiled. And a light bulb went off in my head like, this son of a bitch comes in here, says some guy pointed a gun at him to get everybody all in a fervor 
so that he doesn't have to deal with the ramifications of what he did, which yep. was just recklessly throw out a gay slander in public while on the job with the company fucking logo. Right on, yeah. And, you know, when he said it, I was behind him in traffic, not alongside him, behind him, right? Okay. So he's looking in his mirror to talk to me when he said it, and I'm leaning out the window to talk forward and shit. And I just shook my head, and I look at him, and I'm like, no. And he's like, what was it then? And he's kind of sitting there all smug. Mm-hmm. And I should have been like, well, you knew, because you were like, you're going to hit me with your stick? Ha, ha, ha. Like, I was just so discombobulated by the fact that he apparently told them I pointed a gun at him. Because that's fucking serious. We'll get back to that in a second. I was going to say, it's serious on so many levels, yeah. Right. Especially in this day and age. So he's like... So what was it then? And I'm like, oh, it was an expandable police baton. And she goes, oh, so a weapon? Right. And I just shake my head because she weighs as much as my legs and she's a Gen Zer, and it's like, shut the fuck up, little girl, no one's talking to you. Right. And the guy goes, are you a police? <laughs> Which is just astronomically fucking stupid sounding. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, apparently nobody here seems to give a shit that he called me a faggot. That's a pretty big fucking deal. But, you know, uh, maybe I'll just call corporate that. I was going to say. I and they're like, go ahead that. then. Like, that was their attitude. Yeah. And then I'm leaving. I just look at her. I'm like, whatever, Gen Z. You guys got all the answers. And I turn around to go. And she's like, okay, boomer. Yeah. And it's like laughing close. at herself. And I'm just like, what a stupid cunt. I really wish your mother would have had an abortion, little girl. Here's the funny thing. That Domino's is across the street from the fucking hospital I worked at. Okay, I was going to ask. I've been in there a bunch of times. Yeah. And the people that work at that hospital frequent that motherfucker all the time. And that hospital is very all positivity, all support, pro-gay everything. Right? Yep. So I get home, and I'm already nervous that I'm going to get pulled over because somebody called the cops right. and described me as did. somebody that pointed a gun yep. at a pizza guy. Because this is, you know, recently after the Uvalde shooting with all those kids. And there's gun violence every day in this fucking country. You cannot fucking say somebody pointed a gun at you if you reasonably believe they didn't. That's like yelling fire in a fucking movie theater. I I agree nowadays. Absolutely. Because what if the cops were called and they did show up before I left there? And as soon as I step outside, they're already drawing down on me. Because this motherfucker wanted to get out of trouble... So he tells this lie. Now, either I get arrested for bullshit and then I have to defend myself legally, or what if one of them gets trigger happy and pops me off? What if because of this one guy's willingness to try to get out of fucking trouble by spinning a web of lies, my kids don't have a dad anymore? Like, fucking think about the consequences of your shitty, 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 shitty behavior. All these kids, it was fucking full of kids. The whole place, he was the only one that I thought that was working there was over the age of like 25. Oh, yeah, of course. Tons of high school kids. And you're going to get them all fucking jazzed up over a possible gun threat? That's so fucking irresponsible. Like, egregiously stupid. I called a buddy that's a cop in town, left him a voicemail. Didn't hear from him for two days because he was on his days off. He assured me he had gotten no emails about an incident of, you know, like a bolo or yeah. me being on the lamb, which was a fucking relief. <laughs> Looking for your car. I'm yes, tweeting at Domino's. I'm messaging Domino's. I'm retweeting my own tweet at a couple of gay periodicals. Okay. Like, because it's Pride Month. Uh, I also tweeted it at GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Association Against Defamation. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I haven't heard back, but maybe I just don't have a high enough Twitter score. Oh. Bitch. It's probably it, you know. I don't know how fucking Twitter works. To get somebody's attention, it's very hard if they're not monitoring. Especially yeah. somebody like Glad probably gets mentioned like 30,000 times a minute. Hi. Very true. Very true. And your and your your beef with Domino's in Brooklyn Park probably uh isn't going to make the radar. No. Uh, I will say that I did get an email the next day from corporate after messaging Domino's corporate Twitter account. Okay. Now they were like, we will notify the local management team of your complaint. And I'm like, I hope local management team doesn't mean that same red-haired chubby kid that didn't seem to take me seriously and just basically blew me off. But maybe the management they team, 
aren't aren't most Domino's franchised? I believe they're owner operated or maybe owned by a a group of investors or something like that. So I'm sure something. it'll get back to some level where they might go, this is unacceptable, and they'll maybe bring the hammer down. You can- Somebody from corporate did email me, and I didn't see it for like three or four days. And then I left him a voicemail from the Juices number mm-hmm. because, frankly, they asked for my name and phone number and email. And I'm like, if I give them my phone number and it goes to the store, well, then they've got my address and everything. And no, thank you. They're already threatening to call the cops. And this guy was fucking levying false claims of... I'm like, for fear of reprisal, here's my email. That's all you will get. And then the guy, I left him a voicemail, haven't heard shit. I emailed him that I left him a voicemail. I didn't hear shit. Today, I finally said, okay, well, apparently you don't care because I haven't heard from you, but here's my rundown of the incident. And I damn sure expect something to happen to this driver because just so you know, I will gladly retell this story verbatim, under oath, well deposed. Right. (laughs) Everything this guy is saying is false. So, I mean, if he's willing to lie under oath. But what I did when I pulled out my ASP was technically road rage. If I would have just not done that and then driven to the store, then he doesn't have the claim of the, he pointed a gun at me. I I was the stupid one who lost my cool. But being a parent of a child that recently has decided that they are a lesbian, it's Pride Month. This happened on June 2nd, the second day of Pride Month. I was incensed. I'm like, don't fucking use that word on me, you idiot. Now, this guy's probably like late 40s, mid 50s, judging by his his figure and his lack of hair. He just, I'm going to refer to him as Richard because he acted like one. But yeah, I want Domino's to fucking fire that guy. And the funny thing about it is that manager, <laughs> my cop friend, he's like, it's funny you bring up that Domino's. We had to go in there a few months back, me and my partner, because we got a call that somebody thought they were being robbed. And we walk in, and there's that same manager, and he's just screaming at a couple employees. And we're like, hey, police. He's like, well, what are you guys doing here? Oh, we got a call that somebody thought that there was something wrong, like you might be getting robbed because of all the yelling. He's like, well, I'm just disciplining my employees. Jesus. Nice guy to work for. Right. Like, this is a fucking loser of a kid, a kid, a man-child, who has no power in life, so he takes it out on people that he does have power over. At his shitty fucking pizza management job, he's a shift manager at Domino's. Probably working with high school kids, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, now maybe he's got a stepdad that yells at him too much about cleaning his room more often or tell him that his beard looks stupid, because frankly it does. It looks like orange pubes on your face. Maybe his parents has a lot of, have a lot of regrets. I'm sure they do. At some point, I'm sure his mother wishes that she would have just, you know swallowed instead but this fucking driver like dude i get that you're the age group and if i were to run into him again and go you and me are gonna fucking talk i'm not gonna hurt you i'm not gonna do anything just hear me out what you said unacceptable i have a child that's lesbian i don't fucking appreciate you throwing that word out but just for the sake of argument you and i you're probably 15 years older than me we're different generations we threw the word faggot around with reckless abandon back in the day. It ain't like that anymore. So what would you done if I was gay? And I did call corporate. And I told them that. And I proved my identity. And they fired your ass. Do you ever fucking think in your loosey-goosey, I don't give a shit because I deliver food for a fucking living existence, that maybe you should not be such an asshole and watch your fucking mouth? Like, call me every other name that isn't something like a gay slur. Right. Or the N-word. Right. I'm not black. That's not a good look for a major corporation. Because let's just say, sake of argument, hypothetical. I'm tweeting at places. I tweet at local news stations. They pick up on the story. Because it's Pride Month. Oh, yeah. Now, it is his word against mine. But again, like I said, under oath, well deposed. In front of one of your corporate lawyers, I will fucking look them square in their soulless eyes and be like, that shit happened and it pissed me off. I put that on my fucking kids. Now, if that were to become a story where if I would have had a smartphone and I videotaped him saying that, and then I tweeted it and oh, it goes viral. That would have been the story. That, yeah. holy shit, right. he would have been fired. And then if everything that happened at the fucking restaurant would have gone down. See, this is why you need a dash cam. All these people that get this stuff caught on video because they have a dash cam or something like that. you know. Now, let's go back to 
little sourpuss Susie square tits there oh, with her stupid friend. facial piercings and her half green hair that clearly soaking into her brain because one, so you pull a gun on him? You're awfully confident in that accusation for somebody that wasn't there and haven't heard my side of the fucking story yet. Like, snap judgment, Gen Z, fucking classic. Let's take it a layer deeper. If I did that, it's a fucking felony to do that. Right. Would I come in here and show you all my face and be on fucking camera, you stupid cunt? Think about that shit. My biggest thing is why she felt empowered to even pipe up or say anything in that situation anyway. You know, I remember, you know, sticking up for her own. I can kind of get that. But at the same time, you don't have that age, though. I wouldn't have been saying anything. I don't want to get in the middle of this. Like I maybe I had more common sense at that age because that's what I look at it as. It's like have the common sense to keep your mouth shut. Well, it should have only been between me and him and the manager. That's and what the I mean. funny thing is, and I left this part out when I was telling, is when I when the guy said he's the manager, I'm like, can I talk to you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, can we like step outside the door and talk? No. Can we talk over here away from the counter? No, we can do it right here. Like he had to stand behind the counter with all of his little work buddies behind him. And I'm like, is he just stonewalling me? Or is this because he's fucking scared? Probably a bit of both. And it might have been one of those things, too. As a manager, he wanted to be in power, and that was how he kept power. Uh, right? By, how do you treat your fucking customers like that, dude? Right. It's on camera. Yeah, but you heard how I he came treats in, his employees. And I'm waving my hands. I'm like, I just want to talk. I don't want any trouble. I did not come here to start a fight or any bullshit like that. I calmly let him know that right out of the gate. And then I told him my side of the story. And he's just kind of like, okay, so... Okay, so I wish your mom would have sat on like a hundred wire coat hangers during her second trimester, you stupid piece of shit. Right. God damn, you soulless motherfucker. Because he's a ginger. I hate so many people. Well, it was an interesting hypocrisy here. You say the Gen Zers, you know, are all socially aware and involved. But But they're quick to point a finger and say, how fucking dare you without getting the information. Yeah. Yeah. They're the ones that have seemed to not latch on to cancel culture but leech off of it to feel empowered like I'm young and I know everything because 20 somethings we kind of felt like we oh we're adults now we know shit we oh, didn't yeah. know shit no 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 you don't you but don't. now there's a that we weren't living in the fucking smartphone internet social media age we were living in the internet age though I mean we were getting tons of but, yeah, like, this but nobody is before had a computer in their polluted. pocket that they could fucking yeah. tweet oh. all this shit and next You're thing right. you know a story that's not even true yeah. becomes a fucking massively retweeted or reproduced fucking everybody gets this false information oh yeah and because of that narrative nobody trusts anything so now you get people that just flat out lie and it's believed hook line and sinker (coughs) republican party right right so why would i go to all the trouble of going into the store if i was making any of this shit up why what do i have to gain free pizza no thanks. I said that when I t- when I was messaging corporate. I'm like, I don't want free pizza. I don't I'm even want an apology because it's here. not going to mean anything. I want something done to this guy in terms of his job. Like he needs to really be raked over the coals for this. There and, has to be some reprimand for this action, right? Well, but I mean, I'm sure they won't do shit. And here's why: because I don't have video of it, so I can't prove it. So they'll say, well, if we do it to him, it's your word against his. There's no proof. So without all those evidentiary pieces to support what you're claiming, if we do anything, he could sue us for wrongful termination. Well, the only thing that may help is what if there's been other complaints? What if this isn't his first time? Yeah. You know, or if he does it again, now there is a, a record or at least some type of history of him doing this stuff and they could drop him, you know, no questions asked as opposed to just one incident. He's been a good worker. It doesn't sound like he is. I mean, obviously, if this guy's doing this at 40... But that's not a very good sample size of his personality. But if you're throwing around the word faggot in traffic while you're on the job in your company logoed vehicle, that's your personal vehicle, you've done shit like this before. You're comfortable being that big of a piece of garbage. Or nobody's called you out on it, and you can just be brazen. Well, I think he's going to run out of luck here because karma's a bitch, and his delivery area is becoming more and more crime-ridden. Especially with like gun violence and carjackings. Yeah. And I'm not saying I want him to get shot, but it would be a bittersweet piece of irony to find out on the news that that guy got fucking shot 
for calling somebody a, a faggot. Or just in general. Like, he, you know, somebody doesn't like the cut I'm of his jib and tries to rob him there. and they just fucking pop him in the chest and he's dead. Now, again, not saying I want that to happen, but that's how irony works. That's how karma can work. Well, I don't know if death is that always the, the, the answer that karma dishes out, but, you know, hopefully his life is, is made to be pretty rough. His life pretty much sucks already, which is why he's probably getting angry on the road and hurling slurs. Wouldn't it be funny if just like a street gang of roller skate clad gay men that are just out and about and he drops that word on them and then he happens to be delivering to a house stop late. like three yeah. houses down from them and then they just hold him down and finger his asshole one by one until he can't sit comfortably and he's full of anal fissures an anal fissure is a small tear in the thin moist tissue that lines the anus seems extreme i was going with you know just surround his car so he can't go anywhere but yeah ah, he'd probably back over him <laughs> And then his manager would be like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, yeah, but so you guys were confronting him about calling you a, a gaggle of fags? Right. Hey, roller queers, nice skate. Like, that'd be something, like, along the lines of what he would say. Like, the comedian in me can think of, you know, funny stuff. Especially if they're all, like, skating in a line for some reason, holding the hips of the guy in front of them. And they're kind of, like, moving their hips back and forth like they're roll bouncing. Like in the movie of the same name. Roll bounce? Okay, yeah. I was actually thinking of uh, the one with T.I. in it, uh, ATL. That involved a lot of roller skating in a rink, too. Yeah, but a little bit darker. Yeah, a little bit. Less fun. Yeah. Not quite boys in the hood, but yeah. There wasn't any forcible anal fingering as revenge for hurling homophobic epithets. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast. I'm J Man. This is Steiny. And that's the end.